This is Dennis McMahon and welcome to Positively Vermont. And today my guest is Christopher Parker, the executive director of the Vermont Rail Action Network. And we are going to be speaking about some very exciting things that are happening real soon with rail transportation right here in the state of Vermont. And uh, I want to thank Christopher for all his efforts. Uh, and we're recording this on July 11th. Uh, and uh, the funny thing about it, I just realized that uh, I arrived in Vermont on July 11th, 2002, and I got here via Amtrak. And coincidentally, we're going to be speaking all about Amtrak's uh, return to uh, regular Vermont service. Uh, welcome, Christopher. Uh, first of all, thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, from your background, and how you got involved with uh, the Vermont Rail Action Network. So um, I grew up along a railroad line and saw the trains, and um, they made an impact on me when I was a kid. Uh, I ended up working for a railroad on Cape Cod as a conductor, and I was also marketing director for a little bit. And um, I've always thought that that um, trains are important, that uh, rail service is something that, um, you know, for our environment, it's a critical piece and um, also for our economy. And so in 2007, I was recruited into this job as executive director for the Vermont Rail Action Network. I was at a point in my life where I could say yes, and I did. Um, so I have, a, I have expertise in, um, the technical side of railroads, of operations and economics and um, marketing. And I also have a background in some nonprofits that I worked at before this. So um, uh, that, that led me to this role here. Tell me uh, what the uh, Vermont Rail Action Network consists of, uh, what its activities are, who its participants, and some of its projects before we get to the big one. Well, we're an advocacy group. We support better train service. There are uh, 6,000 people on our list of supporters. Um, about, <laughs> excuse me, about 500 or so um, that are the core engaged people that, uh, you know, that, that show up all the time. Um, we include passenger train riders, of course, and freight shippers, uh, railroaders themselves, and um, the railroads have also given us support and um, those for whom the trains support their economic lives. So for example, developers, owners of businesses that um, earn an income from people coming in on Amtrak, um, people who take the train to their clients, for example, uh, things like that. How important is rail service to the state's economy? Vermont, is a state that has always lived in orbit of the larger economies in Boston and New York City. So, you know, um, back in the days of the woolen mills, the, the wool from Vermont ended up getting processed and sent off to the larger textile mills down south. And we're still doing that in terms of uh, tourism and technology and um, people who retire. Uh, you know, it's all connected to the larger centers. So. Transportation to those centers is really critical. And how close we can get, uh, not just in terms of miles, but in terms of time and in terms of, I call it being on the map. So for example, the hospital in Rutland uses Amtrak access to Rutland as part of their recruitment because they know that doctors, and I forget the details here, um, but there's a study that the doctors are not willing to move X number of miles past their spouse's family. So they know that, and they know that, that, um, that Vermont is perceived as being a little far, and they know that having an Amtrak train is gonna make people more willing to take the job at the Rutland Hospital. So that's, that's the being on the map. So how critical is it? Well, the thing about the economy is things happen at the margin, right? So if the economy goes bad and unemployment goes from um, 
whatever, 5% to 10%, all of a sudden you've got suffering and it's a relatively small movement, but certain things make that difference. So think about New York City where 55% of the New Yorkers don't even have cars. Do we want their business as, as tourists up in Vermont? Of course, right? Um, and if we didn't give them a way to get here, they wouldn't come, they'd go to the Poconos or something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, critical is a big word, but um, it, plays, it plays a part for sure. The last time we spoke was uh, about 10 months ago, right in the, in the dead center of the pandemic. And we've yeah. spoken about uh, some of the hopes and aspirations of the Vermont Rail Transit uh, Rail, Rail Action Network and, uh, it, and some of the activities you were working on then. And now it seems that some of those wishes have come true uh, during the last 10 months. Tell us how this uh, developed. Well. So here we are um, today being July 11th that we're talking, July 19th, a um, little more than a week away, we're gonna see our Amtrak trains come back and that's gonna be a large celebration. Uh, I'm impressed with how many people think uh, this is important and, that, and have already signed up to be on the train and come out at the stations. Um, so, how did we get here? Well, at one point, someone from the agency of transportation was saying, oh, the, you know, the trains can't restart till September. And the issue there is that there's a lead time for the cars to be put back in service after their, you know, their, their mothball time and for the crews to relearn the territory. And um, they'll tell me they already know the territory, but, you know, officially they need rides back and forth and they need to be retested on all the physical qualifications and so forth. And um, so there's a, a lead time, Amtrak said it would take three months. And that's why the train's not starting um, that day that, that um, Phil Scott took off his mask and said everything's open. We didn't have a train that day because of that lead time. We were afraid that that lead time would mean that, that we wouldn't get the train until the end of the summer and we'd lose the whole summer season. And um, rail supporters, I mean, a lot of rail supporters thought the train should be just running right on through. Uh, as an organization, our position was, we wanted to make sure that everyone remembered that lead time and that when it was time for the train to resume, that that decision was made far enough in advance that it could resume so that summer travel could be accommodated. So uh, I guess we were heard. Well, you know, this, this wasn't just the railroad and it wasn't just the government, it was citizens involved in this, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely, right. Uh, letters, you know, um, uh, people who uh, are in a position to maybe have a little closer influence, um, mayors, for example, who are in communication with the governor. And, you know, I, I think that uh, everybody understood, I think, you know, it wasn't any kind of, I don't know, there isn't, there, there isn't any kind of large drama here uh, or nobody at fault or anything like that. It's just human nature that you don't want to be overlooked. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds all very exciting. And uh, uh, this, this is uh, uh, going to be starting on the, the 19th, which is uh, a week from today. Uh, but tell us exactly what's going to be happening. Uh, there, before we get into the, the various components, uh, the various celebratory uh, locations and what's going to be happening. I know the library in Essex Junction is very enthused. And I know there's, uh, you mentioned one in St. Albans and, and Montpelier mm -hmm. and all of that. Before we get into that, just tell us what's going to happen that day statewide. Uh, what, what, what trains are coming back and what, what is the uh, development? Well, the big thing is the train's going to run and you can ride it. So um, hard to top that. But uh, we are topping that because at every station there will be a celebration. And not only that, um, Vermont Agency of Transportation worked with Amtrak to create a $1 fare so you can ride it for, uh, for cheap. At least you can today, uh, July 11th. Um, at least some parts of the trip are already 80% sold out. So I'm pretty confident the train's gonna be sold out. Uh, your uh, viewers hopefully will have a chance to get on, but uh, 
I'm sure there will be crowds, and I'm sure that that um, it will be a um, a festive day. So the day is going to kick off in St. Albans. That's where the um, the Vermonter starts, and it's also going to kick off in Rutland, where the East St. Allen starts. And in both locations, there are going to be um, dignitaries who have something to say. Um, Right. Uh, I know that, that Dave Allaire, the mayor of, of Rutland, will be on hand to, um, I wouldn't say give the keys to the city to the arrivals because they're leaving, but um, the equivalent. And up in St. Albans, um, an Amtrak vice president will be there. And I believe, uh, if I remember right, the governor's um, coming and uh, a number of, of people are, are participating in, in um, celebration. So. It's going to be a little different at different stations depending on the local scene. Uh, some of the stations are going to have uh, music, uh, bands, and so forth. Um, some of that's still being arranged as we speak. Many of the stations will have, have um, speakers and workshops. One thing that is happening, and this is important, is um, there'll be workshops or little mini workshops or presentations from Operation Lifesaver. So I don't know if you know about Operation Lifesaver, but what they are is an organization that uh, puts out the message of safety around railroad tracks and railroad crossings. So during this time, we know that people's driving habits have gotten worse. We know that the number of crashes stay the same or escalated, even though the amount of driving went down a lot. And we know that people get complacent because that's human nature. And so now we have a shift from uh, one train a day to, to um, in each direction. So two movements to four movements a day with an Amtrak train in each direction. And of course, the Amtrak train is faster. Uh, you know, there's less margin for mistakes. So that message from Operation Lifesaver is um, you know, stop when the lights start flashing and the gates go down, take it seriously and stop and don't mess around and don't think you have some seconds to try and get away with it. We all know that, but um, sometimes you have to be reminded. Yeah, I, I remember uh, we, we were discussing that, uh, that program, uh, but those areas now have been dormant for well over a year, so it, it's going to require some special vigilance, isn't it, you know, the, the crossings. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in some ways, it's just the ordinary responsibility that we all should observe as drivers or, or people walking in the area, but, um, you know, you know how it is. <laughs> well, tell us, so the two trains are the Ethan Allen and the Vermonter? Yeah, that's right. Could you describe what each of those uh, trains, where do they go and what the level of service is? So the Vermonter runs the length of Vermont, coming up from Massachusetts. It comes up from Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Springfield, Massachusetts, and stops in Brattleboro and up the Connecticut River Valley to White River Junction, and then up following Interstate 89, um, passing through Randolph, Montpelier, Waterbury, Essex Junction, uh, up to St. Albans. And um, that train has a goal of continuing up to Montreal at some point in the future. And then the Ethan Allen is on the other side of the state. And it also comes up from New York City and uh, goes through Albany and uh, ends up in Rutland, Vermont uh, via Castleton. And it has uh, a goal which will be realized in um, a year or so. Um, <clears throat> emphasis on the or so, it's not quite established yet. Um, and that goal is to end up in Burlington um, via Middlebury. So each each side of the state has their their train service from Amtrak. Is it possible uh, once this starts? I didn't even know we, we were serving Middlebury now. You could go from Burlington to Middlebury by train. Um, well, this begins in 2022, so not yet, okay. um, but soon. That's the plan. They're going to have that new uh, terminal uh, downtown. Is that the one you're going to serve that? That's that's right, and of course. Um, uh, new is is a relative term because it is the historic Union Station that is now um, Main Street Landing, 
and um, on the lakeside, a new platform is being built. And there was a platform there, but this one will be um, better for ADA compliance. That, that is, is disability um, access. Yeah. Right. Um, handicap access and uh, safety, other safety features. That's that's wonderful. I mean, this this is a, this is like a whole new era. Um, uh, you know, it's very exciting, actually. You must be oh, yeah. excited. Yeah, it's good. Um, I'm, I'm going to enjoy being on the first train for sure. Where's that? Where, I will look, not be alone in that in that feeling. Tell us about that. What? How's that going to work? Well, I'm going to go up to St. Albans because I want to be there at that kickoff. So, me personally, that's my plan. And I'm going to go down to Brattleboro. I like Brattleboro. I lived there for a long time, and. Um, spend the afternoon there and take the train back up. Uh, I think about 130 other people are making the same trip from one station or another, according to the latest numbers I saw. So obviously, uh, obviously other people like Brattleboro too. It's a nice place. I'm sure it'll be a good day uh, for the restaurants in Brattleboro serving lunch, have an extra 130 people. Uh, patronizing them so other things about the day um like i said i'm taking the train back in the afternoon but if you want a shorter trip uh, shuttles are being arranged just for this day july 19th by the agency of transportation so they'll return from um, montpelier junction and from brattleboro uh, and then the ethan allen is also having shuttles uh, so it is possible to get um, kind of a little round trip excursion. And those, both the train and the shuttles are by reservation only. So um, I'll throw out there that the link for this special fare and for the shuttles is Amtrak.com slash Vermont. If you're trying to get it from the, the regular Amtrak site, uh, you won't get access to the shuttles and you won't get access to the special fare. But uh, Amtrak.com slash Vermont is just for this celebratory one day event. And you can buy tickets through that website? You can. And suppose you're- Assuming you got a dollar. So the dollar fare, that's amazing. Um, just like the concept of intrastate travel. You know, mm -hmm. Maybe getting on an Essex Junction and going, going to Montpelier or going to Rattleboro, that, that is just such a novel concept. You know, not, not just going or coming from New York City or Washington or places like that. Well, you know, there's a, a deeper lesson here. So obviously this is a celebratory day and this is, this is a day for um, marking the event and, and you, could, you could call the whole thing marketing if you wanted to. Um, but also the deeper lesson is the influence of pricing on ridership. So we're gonna have a sold out train here. We're gonna have a train that's sold out couple weeks before it even runs. And some of that is because it's the first day and there's a lot of attention and- Emotional fare. Yes, for sure. Um, but it is also because of the price. And if we're serious about uh, getting people out of cars, particularly on the long trips for the benefit of the environment, then pricing is part of the equation because um, you know, uh, it's a competitive world and the competition is driving and people's perception, which is not accurate, but people's perception is that the highways are free. All they need is gas. Mm -hmm. Nobody thinks about wear and tear in our society um, until they get to the time where they um, write it off on their taxes. If you do, then you, then you charge 50 cents a mile, but that's not what's in people's heads. So the competitive game here is uh, about price at some level. Some people are are so sold on the benefits of a rail trip, like me, right? Mm -hmm. I get somewhere and I will arrive relaxed if I take the train. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will have used my time in a way I want to, rather than just, you know, staring at the, at the headlights in front of me, the taillights in front of me. Um, but price makes a difference. How's that being worked out? I mean, we, we have the $1 uh, 
promotional affair, but I, I don't know if you're conversing with the fairs now, but uh, mm -hmm. what, what are the fairs going to be like, if, if you can estimate? So Amtrak's goal is to get the maximum revenue that's possible for each train movement. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they do it like the airlines, like yield management. So if you buy a ticket in advance, it's going to be cheaper. And as they see that there's going to be, you know, less and less space, the fares go up. And um, that, that makes sense from the perspective of maximizing revenue. It makes sense from the perspective of, um, uh, I guess, the, the, you know, looking out for the financial interests of the taxpayers who are supporting the service. Um, because if certain days have, have more value than other days, right? Like the day that um, UVM goes back in session, the train is routinely sold out. So um, from, a, you know, from a, a public financial perspective, that makes sense. Um, it, 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 um, it makes sense when you think of the train as a perishable and finite resource, right? Every train has 272 seats, more or less. And those seats go away when the train leaves. They're not available anymore. Um, but if they're not sold, then it's, you know, it's from the perspective of the operator, it, and, and us as taxpayers, of course, um, it is uh, revenue that didn't come in. So you want those fare to be low enough to fill up as many seats as you can. Mm -hmm. That's the theory. Mm -hmm. um, so not everybody likes that idea because the value is on a fixed inventory of seats and on earning as much money as possible for the service. So other people would say, well, the point of the train is to bring as many people to Vermont as possible. So we should always charge a low fare. Or they would say the point of the train is uh, to get people out of their cars, especially for these long trips that can in fact emit as much as your commute for many months. So um, in order to get as many people out of the cars, we should just put on more cars if more people want to run on these busy days. Um, from a financial perspective, you wouldn't do that. You would, uh, you would um, allocate the inventory, but you know, it's all, it all depends on your values and, and um, spending public resources always has trade-offs. Well, it sounds like your work has just begun. Uh, uh, the effort to uh, make sure this is promoted, to make sure it's sustained, uh, to make sure it's popularized, to make sure it's economical, uh, and also bringing interest from community and uh, industry leaders. Uh, it sounds mm -hmm. like you've got your work cut out for you. Well, yeah, there is definitely work to be done. Um, and the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, it isn't just my work or even the Agency of Transportation or Amtrak, because in fact, this train is valued by Vermonters. And so um, together, valuing the train, all of us make the train successful. Um, and also, you know, it's the role of an advocacy organization to uh, bring forth the support that's already out there among, among the train supporters. So it's, it's, it's all of us, it's the team, it's the people who value the train. Having said that, I mentioned the goal of um, going back to Montreal. And, you know, that is um, very clear as, as a goal that has been acknowledged. Um, but there's some steps still left to occur. And that includes uh, an agreement to build a customs facility in um, Montreal Central Station. That's been agreed to in principle. At this point, it's, it's detailed. It also includes some track work and some other things. Mm -hmm. um, however, <clears throat> even though it's been agreed to in principle, when you've got customs from two countries and a province and another two states and Amtrak and, um, and so forth, um, 
it's been a slow process and you know this this is what leaders are are good for is is making this stuff happen but it does need to happen and it does take public support to keep the ball rolling along to keep everybody's attention on it and then looking further ahead it's time to think about a second train in the Connecticut River Valley Massachusetts has put on additional frequencies, additional runs uh, south of Greenfield, Massachusetts. And they're just sitting overnight. That train that's already running out of Greenfield really ought to be running out of White River Junction. Mm -hmm. So the amount of resources it would take to run out of White River Junction is trivial, honestly, because it's already running. You've already got the cars, you've even got the crew. You just need to put them up in the hotel at White River Junction. I can see that that uh, you know a, a lot has to be done, and what what we like to ask uh, here on Positively Vermont is, what do you need as an organization? Uh, and what uh, can uh, our our viewers do to support your efforts and and uh, some of the uh, goals that you just discussed? Yeah, um, so our website is railvermont.org. So if you go to the the um, website, you'll see a sort of summary view of what we're up to and what we're about. Uh, joining our email list is our chance to communicate to you. It's our chance to let you know what's going on and um, educate in a sense. Uh, and of course, two-way conversation is great. Um, so our organizational or advocacy power is the numbers of people that uh, are on our mailing list and are willing to make their support known uh, politically to their representatives uh, and to the governor and, and uh, the delegation and so forth. Um, there is an ideology that maybe, you know, um, this should all be private enterprise and maybe it should but that's not the world we live in. We live in a world where highways and airports and railways are all the result of political processes and also the planning process that um, our regional planning organizations uh, organize. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, we're in a democracy and we vote, but the other thing that happens in the democracy is this level of sort of constant uh, feedback that we give to our leaders and our, our government. And um, that happens through advocacy organizations like us, but it happens through the direct contact. And really, being an engaged citizen, you have a lot more power than you know you do. Well, that, that's great, because I, I really believe that your efforts and, and uh, some of the items we discussed uh, over uh, 10 months ago did have an impact getting people interested in this. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I think that's important to emphasize. You know, one thing I've learned in this work is when I give attention to something, things really do shift. And it's not because that's a lesson for me. That's just a lesson. When you give attention for something, things shift. Well, that's great. I mean, that's really great. I want to congratulate you and your colleagues on this because it, it's, it, it's almost a miracle. I mean, from what I've seen over the, the past uh, time period, uh, this is really going to be lovely. Uh, and particularly, you know, all the other things about the, the leap season and, and holidays and schools uh, and, you know, going to college, looking at colleges, uh, education. Mm -hmm. I can just see the entire picture opening up, uh, but it's going to take work as you said sure well life is work sometimes isn't it yeah well it's work is... but play as yeah. well yeah and it's the recreational and tourist uh potential here uh oh for sure yeah a, a great impact you know just mm -hmm. just even for the the brand that you know the vermont brand um, that's right you can get here by train so it, it's just a lovely thing so we're going to, once as soon as things develop, we're going to bring you back uh, for a progress report uh, in the near future. Thank you. It was good to speak to you 10, men, 10 months ago, and 
a lot's happened since then. And I want to congratulate you and your organization for the role that you played in this. Well, thank you. I appreciate the chance to talk to you and talk to your, your viewers. That's great. Well, thank you very much. My guest today has been Christopher Parker, the executive director of the Vermont Rail Action Network. Uh, this is Dennis McMahon. Thank you for watching Positively Vermont.